Abortion, one of the most divisive subjects of our time. Ministers of religion avoid preaching on it. Many politicians avoid questions on it. And the rest of us are, in the main, silent. The statements that turned the vote of the US Supreme Court in 1973 that Barbara talked about in, in Roe versus Wade is, number one, a woman has a fundamental right to abort her child. Number two, there is no life at conception. And number three, a woman's right to privacy in having an abortion is protected by the constitution. Here in Australia, abortion on demand is now legislated across the country. So far, in the first six months of this year, the World Health Organization reports there have been over 17 million abortions worldwide. A poll in 2016 in the US found that 52% of women having an abortion self-identify as Christian. Here in Australia, and I'm sure in many countries, it is estimated that half of all pregnancies are unplanned and that half of those are terminated. Also, that over a third of Australian women will have an abortion in their lifetime. I firmly believe it is my task to try and get into the hearts and the minds of our young people and talk with them about the long-term consequences of terminating a baby that they may carry in the future. As one very honest lady said, the abortion made two victims, one damaged and one dead. There is a myriad of information about the outcomes of, of abortion-related court cases and laws passed around the world. However, today we are here to clearly show that even though we oppose abortion, we have only compassion and understanding for those who may have had one in the past. It is also our responsibility to educate the young ones about how human life develops in the womb and also to discuss the consequences of sexual activity and potential pregnancy, whether intended or not. Is this pro-life debate simply about mainly Bible bashing Christians giving their opinion? Or is it about the fundamental right of a child to have the chance of a full and productive life? Personally, I absolutely believe there is a God in heaven who we call our Heavenly Father. So my view aligns with his. I sincerely also believe that our Father is the only creative power in the development of a baby. From the very point of conception until their death, hopefully, after a lifetime of journey and memories. I'd like to give you an illustration which I hope will highlight this view. I'm sure many young ladies have sought out a recipe for, let's say, a special cake for a birthday or an anniversary, some delectable type of statement cake, and excitedly gone out and purchased the ingredients. I'm sure we would all agree that after the cake is cooked and decorated that the young lady has every right to slice through the delicious icing and present a beautiful slice to her guests. However, abortion is not like this cake. The lady did not consciously go out and purchase the, the ingredients to make this baby. The choice this lady had was a choice which allowed the egg and the sperm to meet up, except of course, in cases of rape or violence. This baby will, in a few weeks, be a little human person, and often before she is even aware of the pregnancy. In God's view, the Bible says that it is he, not us, who makes all the delicate inner parts of my body and knits me together in my mother's womb. Another translation of Psalm 139 uses the word wove, you wove me in my mother's womb. The woman or the man has absolutely no conscious part in the development of any child in the womb. So while we can choose to create a cake, only God can create a life. It is therefore my argument that the mother does not have any fundamental right to abort this child even among the noisy din of shouting pro-choice advocates who say that she does. 
Yes, she has the right to make many, many choices over her lifetime. However, aborting this innocent child is not one of them. And on the contrary, we must ask, who is considering the child's fundamental right to live? Even when you yourself were snug in your mother's womb, he was intimately interested in you too. In fact, the Bible says more than that. It says that he was interested in you even before you were in the womb. The Bible tells us about a prophet by the name of Jeremiah. God said that even before he was in the womb, this young man would stand up for the people of Israel and speak the direct words of God to them. It says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you to myself. I have appointed you, Jeremiah, as a prophet to the nations. Now, I'd like you to think really honestly here. Do you honestly think that when this baby embryo is multiplying rapidly and making skin, organs, fingers and toes, that it is only, as the abortion clinic will tell you, nothing more than a polyp or a blood clot? When clearly the Bible says that God knows all these little humans even before the sperm and the ovum are united. Do you honestly think that if this child is aborted and you were to look at the products of conception, that it is just a mass of cells? When it is clearly identified as a reassembled tiny fetus in a kidney dish, or in some older cases, a fully formed and functioning baby now relegated to a big bucket ready for incineration, dead or in some cases still alive. I say no, this is a life, this is a little human, this is a child who has the potential to be something, a somebody. How do you know if this child was not destined to be a great musician like Mozart, a brilliant mind like Albert Einstein, a great activist like Martin Luther King, or Rosa Parks, a famous painter like Leonardo da Vinci, an inventor like Henry Ford, an explorer like Neil Armstrong, a Walt Disney, or even maybe a Roger Federer. Just imagine if their mothers had aborted them. We now know with the invention of ultrasounds that even at a few weeks, the baby's form can clearly be seen. Its heart is beating by the fifth week and later scans often show the baby playing in the womb. The Bible doesn't say much about abortion. However, there is page after page that speaks of the plan of God and man. He wants a people that he will dwell with forever. And Revelation tells us this specifically. He speaks of life, eternal life, immortal life. He speaks of life in the womb. And even in the Gospel of Luke, he tells us about an unborn baby rejoicing in there. God and the heavenly hosts rejoice when this child begins to grow, the first heartbeat, or when the little hand and the fingers are formed. How much then does this disappoint him when this child's life is snuffed out just as it is growing? You may not know, the Bible does say that our big enemy, Satan, has been a murderer from the beginning. And he has perpetrated this lie to Christians and non-Christians alike, that is, that personhood does not start at conception. However, rather when the child takes its first breath, Satan is a liar. He wants to kill and he wants to destroy. He claps for joy when people enjoy casual sex outside of marriage, forget God's promises or removing undesirable traits from humans and then dispose of any unwanted outcomes. The medical professional knows full well this baby is a person, and yet the planned parenthood and the Mar Dr. Mari Stopes of the world continue to twist and exterminate all in the name of women's health care. There will all, always be arguments around rape, incest, or the medical viability of the fetus, and the panel will discuss more on this later. I know these are hard questions, and I do not propose to provide an adequate response to some situations. I do know, however, of mothers and parents who have made the difficult decision to proceed with their pregnancy through to birth, already knowing their child is disabled, incompatible with life, or potentially very ill. I know from these experiences that even though tough most days, 
they have treasured their choice and gratefully accepted their child as a gift from God, whether the child lived or died. I also know that medical condition abortions are often completed without the mother and or the father having sufficient time to decide how to proceed. So in summary, I simply and honestly argue against the legal statement, a woman has a fundamental right to abort her child. This is because the child never was and never will be the mother's personal property to keep or kill, maim or destroy. If you have had an abortion and deep down you know that I am speaking the truth, please feel free to contact us at Restoration Fellowship. There absolutely is healing and forgiveness available from our Heavenly Father to you. You can move past this and find ongoing fulfilment in the journey of your life. So yes, I am opposed to the termination of pregnancy.